Master, let me walk with Thee in lowly paths of service free. Tell me Thy secret, help me bear. Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. God has gifted us with the gift of life for another bright new day. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, Master, let me walk with Thee in lowly paths of service free. Tell me Thy secret, help me bear the strain of toil, the fret of care. Help me the slow of heart to move by some clear winning word of love teach me the wayward feet to stay and guide them in the homeward way teach me thy patience still with thee in closer dearer company in work that keeps faith sweet and strong, in trust that triumphs over wrong, in hope that sends a shining ray far down the future's broadening way, in peace that only Thou canst give with Thee, O Master, let me live. Our morning prayer begins on page 33 with our opening sentence for Advent and continues on page 35 and following. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. We continue in prayer. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. To be mighty, oh come let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, and he made it, his hands molded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he himself is our God. We are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. If only you would hear his voice today, for he comes, he comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Now we come to this point where we stand in God's presence, mindful that we have fallen short, mindful of our need for forgiveness. So let us bring before God those things particularly that we are in our consciences. And let us ask for God's forgiveness. And so we pray together, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins known and unknown, things done and left under. And so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So we come to our Psalms now, and the Psalms appointed for this morning are Psalms 40, and Psalm 40 begins on page 519, and Psalm 54 begins on page 536. Let us recite those Psalms together. I waited patiently upon the Lord. He stooped to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the desolate pit, out of the mire and clay. He set my feet upon a high cliff and made my foot in shore. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and stand in awe and put their trust in the Lord. Happy are they who trust the Lord. They do not resort to evil spirits or turn to false gods. Great things are they that you have done, O Lord my God. How great your wonders and your plans for us. There is none who can be compared with you. Oh, that I could make them known and tell them but they are more than I can count. In sacrifice and offering, you take no pleasure. You have given me ears to hear you. Burnt offering and sin offering, you have not required. And so I said, behold, I come. In the rule of the book, it is written concerning me. I love to do your will, O oh my God. Your law is deep in my heart. I proclaim righteousness in the great congregation Behold, I did not restrain my lips, and that, O Lord, you know. Your righteousness have I not hidden in my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and deliverance. I have not concealed your love and faithfulness from the great congregation. You are the Lord. Do not withhold your compassion from me. Let your love and your faithfulness keep me safe forever. For innumerable troubles have crowded upon me. My sins have overtaken me, and I cannot see. They are more in number than the hairs of my head, and my heart fails me. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let them be ashamed and altogether dismayed who seek after my life to destroy it. Let them draw back and be disgraced who take pleasure in my misfortune. Let those who say aha and gloat over me be confounded because they are ashamed. Let all who seek you rejoice in you and be glad. Let those who love your salvation continually say, Great is the Lord. Though I am poor and afflicted, the Lord will have regard for me. You are my helper and my deliverer. Do not tarry. Oh, my God. Psalm 54. Save me, O oh God, by your name. In your might, defend my cause. Hear my prayer, O oh God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. For the arrogant have risen up, up, risen up against me, and the ruthless have sought my life. Those who have no regard for God. Behold, God is my helper. It is the Lord who sustains my life. Render evil to those who spy on me. In your faithfulness, destroy them. I will offer you a free will sacrifice and praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. For you have rescued me from every trouble and my eye has seen the ruin of my foes. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Come now to our first reading, and our first reading is taken from the book of the prophet Zechariah, beginning at chapter 7, verse 8, and ending at chapter 8, verse 8. The word of the Lord came to Zechariah, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Render true judgments, show kindness and mercy to one another, do not oppress the widow, the orphan, the alien, or the poor. 
and do not devise evil in your hearts against one another. But they refused to listen and turned a stubborn shoulder and stopped their ears in order not to hear. They made their hearts adamant in order not to hear the law and the words that the Lord of hosts had sent by his spirit through the former prophets. Therefore, great wrath came from the Lord of hosts. Just as when I called, they would not hear, so when they called, I would not hear, says the Lord of hosts. And I scattered them with a whirlwind among the nations that they had not known. Thus the land they left was desolate, so that no one went to and fro, and the present land was made desolate. The word of the Lord of hosts came to me, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I am jealous for Zion with great jealousy, and I am jealous for her with great wrath. Thus says the Lord, I will return to Zion and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. Jerusalem shall be called the faithful city, and the mountain of the Lord of hosts shall be called the holy mountain. Thus says the Lord of hosts, all men and old women shall again sit in the streets of Jerusalem, each with staff in hand because of their great age. And the streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in the streets. Thus says the Lord of hosts, even though it seems impossible to the remnant of this people in these days, should it also seem impossible to me, says the Lord of hosts? Thus says the Lord of hosts, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country, and I will bring them to live in Jerusalem. They shall be my people, and I will be their God in faithfulness and in righteousness. This is the end of the reading. Thanks be to God. So we come to our canticle on page 52, Jesus Savior. Jesus Savior of the world, come to us in your mercy. We look to you to save and help us. By your cross and your life laid down, you set your people free. We look to you to save and help us. When they were ready to perish, you saved your disciples. We look to you to come to our help. In the greatness of your mercy, loose us from our chains. Forgive the sins of all your people. Make yourself known as our savior and mighty deliverer. Save and help us that we may praise you. Come now and dwell with us, Lord Christ Jesus. Hear our prayer and be with us always. And when you come in your glory, make us to be one with you and to share the life of your kingdom. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And so we come now to our second reading, which is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 14 to 30. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You've been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His, mas 
His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You've been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, Throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the end of the reading. Thanks be to God. Jesus, Jesus as we reflect on this passage today, Jesus is continuing with his parables about the last days. And as we reflect on it today, we pray God's inspiration and guidance on our reflections. So yesterday we dealt with the parable of the ten bridesmaids. And today we are talking about the parable of the talents. So Jesus tells us this parable and we will just quickly recall what it says. It's about a rich man who you know, is going on a very long journey. And so he calls those three servants together. And according to their ability, gives them a different, but each sum was substantial in itself because we are told that talent was worth you know, very, very, it's a large sum of money, indeed. More than any worker could ever hope to, work, to earn in his own lifetime. That's one talent. So it's really large sums of money. One is given five talents, another three, another one, each according to their ability, because the master knows his servants. And he's going away. And the, 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 the story doesn't explicitly, explicitly say it, but the expectation is that these servants will use their abilities to, that they have, which the master also knows they have, and based on their experience, you know, and their ability and working with their master, you know, having worked with their master, then they will use those, the experience and ability to, to grow that money, to increase, uh, to invest it, to use it in such a way that it will increase so their master, whenever he returns, will find that he has increased his wealth, even though he wasn't there. That's the expectation. And so it happens that the master comes back after a long time and he finds the two of the servants have really lived up, lived up to their expectations, to his expectations. So the one with five talents has, made, has earned five more, the one with two talents has earned two more, they have each doubled what they were left with. And so they have been faithful to their master, to the desire of their master, the reason why their master endowed them with, with the sums that he did, so that they would increase it multiply his, his um, assets. And they were complimented and, and you know, called, in the expression that's used in the text, come into the joy of your master. So they were invited you know, in, into that special place where they will reap for, even further re rewards. But the third one, the third servant, didn't do anything. He simply didn't want to do anything. He simply buried the money. And so, as the master points out, if he had simply put the money in the bank, he would have earned interest. And so the master at least would have had some increase. But by bearing the money, he actually um, prevented his master from having whatever that increase might have been. 
So he really works in a sense against his master's interest. And then he seeks to blame the master as well. No. So this servant was failed in what was expected of him in that particular context that we are discussing with the master and his slaves. In that context he had failed. He had not lived up to the expectations of the master, given his abilities. The master knew he had certain abilities, so he had one talent, which was, as I said, a substantial sum. So something was expected of him, more was expected of him. And he took a different tact. He actually did not use whatever talents he had to increase his master's assets. And actually, and as, as we said before, um, caused his master to suffer a loss because if he had put the money in the bank, he would have had more. And so that servant who had failed was condemned and what he had was taken away from him. The one talent was taken away and given to the one who had done, the one with the most ability who had also um, increased his income by twice, the first one. So Jesus ends this parable by saying, you know, leading from the parable to, to the situation of his followers, that those you know, who have nothing even more be taken away. And those who have even more will be given. You know? And those who are like that, that worthless slaves, slave will find themselves thrown in the, into the outer darkness where they'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Obviously for us here, we are to take this parable and it is a parable, so there's some set of parallels that we need to look at. And of course, Jesus is the master and Jesus um, has gone. He's gone, he's done his work in the world, he's given his, given his life for our salvation, salvation of believers, those who have faith in him and he has returned to the Father, but he has promised he is to come again. And when he comes again, he will take with him all those who have proven to be faithful servants. And we are all endowed with, with gifts that Jesus has given us because from his life, his life is teaching and his example, we have learned how we ought to live. Jesus has taught us the way, he's the way. He has taught us how we ought to live with our God, what our, you know, how we should relate to God that we ought to do what is pleasing to God and remain faithful through all the temptations and trials of this life. We, we look to God for all that we would ever want and we seek, as we look to God, to do what is pleasing to God. This is really the, the whole object of our lives, that faith in God through thick and thin. And so, so we have that, that's one of the gifts that we have. He's taught us how to live. He's taught us how to live in a life of faithfulness, okay? And he's given us a commission. He said, go out into the world and make disciples. That is the work that we have to do. So we have our gifts, natural abilities, and, and we have the gift of Jesus' life and example and teaching to help us. So we are to go out into the world and the work we have to do, the understanding is we'll use those gifts that we have to bring, to make disciples, to bring others into the kingdom of God. By the, the way we live, making the love of God known to others, by our word and by our deed. So our lives must be examples of his teaching, is the way we might say it. So we reach out to those who are in need, you know, even in our, interestingly, in our, um, Old Testament reading, you know, there's exhortation, the way that we should treat those who are less fortunate than ourselves, you know, the widows, those who are hungry, you know, those who are who mourn, you know, those who are in prison, those who are naked, those who are hungry, all those who are in need, those who need any kind of support because of their situation. We have to be, you know, the hands and the shoulders, you know, and the hearts, you know, that support them. So that through us, they might come to know about the love of God and therefore turn to him themselves. We have to bring others through our words and deeds, bring others into the kingdom of God, to come to know God and to become, 
therefore part of that great army that we are being called to gather together for Christ. So we have our work to do. Each of us, of course, has our own uh, abilities, like the work, like the servants. And so God just expects us to use what we have, what He has given us. He just expects us to use what we have to its fullest, and that's what we have to do. So we are not all going to be able to achieve for God the things and the same things. Others with more ability, with more gifts, perhaps than we are, because we are all different. Others, we have we are, God will expect more of them. But the question for each of us is, are we doing, based on our given abilities and knowledge, have we, you know, and our faith, have we, have we been using that to its fullest to multiply the kingdom of God, to bring others into the kingdom, kingdom of God? That is the real question that we have to ask. Because for all those who, who live their lives in a way that's pleasing to God and, and really works for God and has contributed to building up the kingdom of God, all those, like the, the two, um, first two workers, first two slaves, all those who have done well, in other words, will receive that call when our Lord comes again. We'll receive that call into his everlasting kingdom. Come, you blessed of my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Those are the words we like to hear. But of course, those who given their abilities, God-given abilities and talents, and all that they, they, they've known, all they've learned, all that Jesus has taught, those who have refused to use their talents, you know, refused to, to reach out and use those talents to build up God's kingdom, refused to reach out to those in need and to bring them into God's love. All of us who, despite all, you know, all the things we do in the church and all the way we present ourselves fail to act in ways, and God will be very aware, in ways that really build up others and build up the kingdom of God. All of those who, who do not live up to, our, to God's expectations of us, given our abilities, we will receive condemnation. So the bottom line for us is may we be very humble people and it continually examine ourselves and pray to God that by His grace we will have the strength and courage to live faithful lives and to do the work that He has called us to do. The Lord be with you. We continue uh, with the Apostles' Creed and we turn to you know, Books of Common Prayer to page 42. 42. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue as we pray together the prayer that our Savior has taught us. O oh, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And we continue with our collect. And our collect for today is a collect for the third Sunday of Advent, found on page 157. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And we continue. Today is an ember day. And we continue on page 201 with the collect um, 
for all Christians in their vocation. Page 201. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we continue in prayer. Today, you know, we thank God for the gift of his holy word, which continues to guide, and guide us and show us the way that we ought to go in this life. So may we listen to God's word and, and, and see God's help and guidance as we live out our daily lives in this time of waiting. Today we pray, as we continue to pray, we pray for all the countries of the world, especially those countries where there is strife, where there are oppressive governments, where people are suffering from all kinds of you know, natural disasters as well. And of course, in many of those countries where the COVID-19 virus is wreaking havoc among, uh, among the population. So we pray for all those countries. We pray for peace where there is war, that God will touch hearts and minds of those who are intent on working out their differences by violence, for those who oppress their own people, for people who are suffering from all kinds of other um, natural disasters. We pray for all these people. We pray for peace and love, for healing and wholeness, and you know, for consolation and strength and courage for all those who have to suffer all kinds of tribulations. We pray for our own country today, Trinidad and Tobago. We lift up those whom God has put in authority over us, our president, prime minister, our members of cabinet, members of parliament, all those who make decisions that affect our lives. And we pray for wisdom and a, and a concern for country as a whole, rather than from, for just limited parts of this country. So we pray for wisdom and grace. We pray for all our people in this land of ours. May we all be very concerned about one another. Let love determine the way we relate to one another. Fill our hearts with that love, Lord, that we will, all our actions will be concerned, not only about ourselves, but for how we might affect others. Especially in this COVID-19 situation, Lord, we pray that we will all be mindful, you know, and act in a way that will not bring harm and hurt to others. We pray for all those who are in need of any kind today. Those who have awakened to a day where they do not know where the next meal will come from. Families who do not know how they will feed their children. We pray for families where children are going astray. And Lord, we pray for your help and intervention. You know, that these young people going astray, being influenced the wrong way, might be brought back onto the path of right. We pray for those who are sick and suffering and are crying out for healing, Lord. May they receive, Lord, that healing and that consolation. We pray for those who mourn the loss of their loved ones today, Lord. Families who have lost loved ones through the COVID virus, families who have lost loved ones through not other kinds of causes, Lord, we pray for all of them and lift them up into your love and care this day. We pray for ourselves as we go out into the world, Lord, make us mindful of the needs of others, Make us be willing to lend a helping hand as far as we are able. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue with the prayer of dedication. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh, Master, let me walk with thee. 
In lowly paths of service free, tell me thy secret, help me bear the strain of toil, the fret of care. Help me the slow of heart to 